So this is a synthesis of 2-chloroethanol. Um, I have here a hydrogen chloride gas generator, and this is two moles of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, hardware store brand, uh, two moles of iodine-free sodium chloride. Um, then I have it running through this gas tube. In the reaction flask, I have two moles of ethylene glycol um, on a hot water bath. And the spill head with the thermometer running to the condenser with ice water. Um, unfortunately, I only have two stands, so I've had to uh, put it on top of these books, but it should, should be fine. Um, receiving flask, and then off the uh, vacuum takeoff, I have a vent hose to vent any of the uh, unused hydrogen chloride gas running it out the window there. So I have my hot water bath heating up here. Um, the reaction of hydrogen chloride and ethylene glycol also produces water as a byproduct. And the water and the 2-chloroethanol form an azeotrope that boils around 100 degrees. So I expect the uh, azeotrope will boil off and collect in the receiving flask. Um, it's important to keep the reaction vessel right around 100 degrees um, for formation of 2-chloroethanol. If it, if it gets a high, higher temperature, um, it favors the formation of dichloroethane. The water uh, in the hot water bath is starting to simmer, so I'm going to turn on the gas generator. Um, just let the drip rate very slow. I'll try to run it uh, relatively slow to keep the reaction vessel from heating up too much. I finally got the drip rate about where I want it. Um, the stopcock was being kind of fussy on the on the addition funnel, but you probably can't see it, but the gas is bubbling nice and slow inside the reaction vessel. It's been about 20 minutes since I turned on the gas generator. The temperature has climbed to about 98 degrees. So far, uh, no distillate has come over. I noticed that the ethylene glycol has gotten cloudy. I don't know if that is from product or hydrogen chloride gas or perhaps just part of the, the heat tubing I've had to use because I don't have any, any glass tubing. The gas generator started slowing down on me a little bit so I just put a little gentle heat on it. I've got it set on about one and seemed to help it pick up somewhat. It's been close to an hour and a half and probably added, I don't know, maybe half of the sulfuric acid. The solution has gotten kind of yellowish, brownish, and dark, and I can see the plastic pipe is blackened, so I think if I were to do this again, I would definitely invest in some glass tubing. However, I, I should be able to fractionally distill uh, the reaction pot contents and hopefully get relatively pure product. It's been about two and a half hours, and I've added all of the sulfuric acid. So I removed the step funnel and replaced it with a glass stopper. <clears throat> you see it's still producing gas in there. Um, the gas is bubbling through the reaction chamber. Uh, the temperature has stayed between 98 and 101 the whole time, and I haven't 
I haven't had anything come over in the receiving flight. It's been about the four hours, four and a half hours, and the gas generation has slowed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the heat off and disconnect the hose from the gas generator so I don't get any suck back in there. This is the reaction vessel um, after all the hydrogen chloride gas has been bubbled through it. See, it's kind of a, almost an orangey, orangey brown color. That's a, a refractional distillation. Uh, I had my fractionating column, the still head, thermometer, and the condenser and a clean receiving flask. And I have a vent hose hooked up to the vacuum tape takeoff to get rid of any hydrogen chloride fumes. Uh, if there is any dichloroethane, it should come off first at around 80 C. Then the water and azeotrope of 2-chloroethanol should come off next. And then around, I think, 127 to 131 is the pure... 2-chloroethanol should come off, and I'm sure there's still uh, ethylene glycol in there. Okay, so we're boiling away nicely. Uh, I've got a couple boiling chips in there. And you can see this lid is just now starting to come over. Um, we're right at, I don't know if you can see that, but it's right at 100. So this is presumably the azeotrope of 2-chloroethanol with water, uh, which has, the, the data I have says that it boils around 98C, and it's composed of 41% 2-chloroethanol and the rest water. So I didn't get any uh, clean fraction between 100 and about 122. Um, I've got these two here, one between 100 and 105, between 105 and 109. And this here is between 109 and about 122. And the temperature in the still head dropped to about 119, which makes me believe that our product in its pure form should come over next. The still head dropped all the way down to about 112 degrees and then it climbed back up and right at 127 I switched out and put in a fresh receiving flask. So this should be pure 2-chloroethanol coming over right now. You can see what we still got in the pot there. Uh, if all the hydrogen chloride reacted with the ethylene glycol, there should be 36 grams of water in there. So I'll have to do some calculations to figure out how much um, and what percentage these first three fractions are. So here's the vessel after distilling off everything below about 135. And as you can see, there's still some methylene glycol in there. Um, this is what I ended up with. I've got this fraction between 100 and 105, this fraction between 105 and 109, this fraction between 110 and 123, and then between 127 and 133, I pulled this off. So this is probably pure, and this would be more pure, and as you go down, it's probably more water um, as you go down. So I'm going to have to try to figure out a way to 
purify these. All right, so it's time to neutralize our crude product, get rid of the acid. Um, you have to use something mild for it, and I, I have here um, sodium carbonate. If you use something like uh, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, it'll actually react uh, with the 2-chloroethanol to make ethylene oxide. <clears throat> so you have to use something mild. So I'm going to pour it in this beaker here. Okay. We'll start slowly adding sodium carbonate. <clears throat> You can see it react with the hydrogen chloride still dissolved in our crude product. I don't know exactly how much this is going to take. So I'm just going to keep adding this and swirling. Um, until there's no more off-gassing and check it with pH paper. So I ended up using about 35 grams of the sodium carbonate. You can see uh, the slightly green ones. <clears throat> that is just slightly basic. So now I'm going to go ahead and gravity filter this. So I put the uh, neutralized crude product in a boiling flask, set up a fractionating column over to the receiving flask, and I should pull off two fractions. The first one will start coming over at 98, and that will be the azeotrope of 2-chloroethanol in water, which is 41% 2-chloroethanol and the rest water. After that comes over, uh, the temperature should rise to about 127, and then the pure 2-chloroethanol will come over. So I should be able to pull off two clean fractions. So I'm collecting the uh, distillate now, and this is coming over at 90, right at 98 degrees. We just started collecting distillate, so this should be the uh, water and 2-chloroethanol azeotrope. The temperature at the stillhead began to drop, and it's slowly rising again. I've pulled off this much distillate. <clears throat> uh, this would be the azeotrope. And once it hits 127, I'm going to switch out receiving flasks and should be taking off pure 2-chloroethanol. So I have my result. Uh, I pulled off 63.4 grams of the azeotrope, and that would be the 41%. And this is um, from two runs. Um, if you calculate that at 41%, that amounts to 25.99 grams of 2-chloroethanol. And I also pulled off 15.5 grams of the pure 2-chloroethanol for a total yield of 41.5 grams. Um, now, based on the starting reagents, that calculates to a 25.8% yield. Now if we calculate uh, based on the ethylene glycol that was consumed, it is a 48.6% yield. So thanks for watching.